as listed on the schedule. Uh, you will need to use uh, SciFinder to get a literature melting point. Uh, you should do that as part of your pre-lab, so when you get a melting point, you'll know what you're looking for. Uh, any questions before we get started? Substitution. Substitution. Ether synthesis. I don't believe we did this in class. I think we can start right here. We have not done this, right? How are we doing this Williamson ether synthesis of this uh, compound here, this ether? Uh, ether, you're, you're making an O, o carbon bond. Uh, we can make this uh, bond here. O carbon. And we can go back, backwards. Retrosynthesis arrow, a double line arrow like this. Retrosynthesis. We can go back to two components. Yikes. Uh, the oxygen anion plus another component would be what? Uh, yikes. Uh, what, propane? <coughs> uh, going backward, would those two react to give the desired product? Three carbon oxygen, yeah. This good? Would these two react to give this? I need a charge. Do what? I need a charge. A positive charge. Your positive charge, a carbocation, um, somebody has done something with this board yet again. Um, <coughs> positive charge might be okay, but you just can't make carbocations. Uh, only way to make carbocation typically is to, uh, well, an alkene and acid, you can't have acid here. We need a leaving group. Uh, we need a leaving group here. What's your favorite leaving group? We need a bromine here. Carbon with a leaving group. Now will these two react to give this coming forward? Yes, now these, this kick off the leaving group and make O carbon bond kick off leaving group. Yes. There's one way to get there. Is there another way to make this? By the way, we'll, we'll finish that up. Could we make the bond over here? That'd be A, A. What if we made the B bond? That would be... Uh, leaving it here. Plus, oh, boop, boop, boop. What's this anion? This is coming backwards. That's a retrosynthetic arrow. Okay, where we're thinking we're go if we come backwards, step back. Going forward would be like this. Uh, yeah, good. Which one's best? Both of these would be uh, best in two reactions. Which one would be, would be better? We have two choices here. First one, why? First one is better. Why is the first one better? Leaving group on a primary carbon. Here the leaving group is on the secondary carbon. We have a better reaction for SN2. SN2, primary. This would be your best reaction. Leaving group on primary. That would be the recommended reaction to give the highest yield. Sterics is largely governed by, SN2 is largely governed by sterics. These two would react by Williamson ether synthesis. O alkylation, putting in another alkyl group on the oxygen. 
carbon with a leaving group. Uh, how would you make this though? That would come from the, we'll never erase the board here. Uh, from the OH compound. Back it up to the neutral OH compound. Coming forward, how would we get to the anion? Strong base. Strong base. What's strong base? Any anion? Any anion? <coughs> Sodium chloride? NaOH. No, NaOH is not a strong enough base. Deprogenation of alcohols, X. Two pages back. What did we use instead of uh, hydroxide? Sodium. Sodium metal. It's a redox reaction. Not really a cup. It's not really a base. It essentially acts as a base, but it's not a traditional base. Sodium metal. <laughs> Make the sodium alkoxide it generates what? What's the byproduct of that reaction with sodium? Water. No, not water. Hydrogen gas. Yeah. Hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. Yes. In lab this week, while the reaction is refluxing, we may <coughs> cut some sodium and put it into an alcohol and watch the bubbles. Hydrogen gas. Um, there we go. Step one, make the alkoxide. Step two, react with the alkyl bromide to make the ether by Williamson ether synthesis. Better approach than this approach. Uh, sulfur is a good nucleophile, particularly for your body, where a neutral sulfur is a decent nucleophile. Under basic conditions, these can exist as anions. So it may be an anion in some, in some places in the body. We talked about that. Um, okay. Alkylation of nitrogen. Direct alkylation of nitrogen, number three. When we use nitrogen as a nucleophile, a means like an sp3 nitrogen, we typically do not have to form the anion. We had to form the anion with oxygen because a neutral oxygen is not a good nucleophile. But a neutral amine is a good nucleophile. There's actually a couple of reactions with nitrogens already in the handouts. Um, <clears throat> actually, a previous handout. Let's see, let's find this previous handout. Uh, they had a scheme, uh, E1, E2. Of resonance. It had a mesylate on it. Which hand don't have the mesylate? Is there 
no handout that has Bezolate written in on something? On a drug census scheme? It's in the substitution request. I know we covered mesolate in the substitution one now, but there's, there's a drug scheme somewhere. Do what? Uh, Dills Alder? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, that's not what I'm thinking about. I think I may have removed it uh, this time around. There used to be two schemes. Um, yeah, there used to be another scheme, I think, on the substitution. Let's look at what's here first, then we'll look at an example. Um, alkylation of nitrogen, okay? Uh, here we've got two reactants, nitrogen and carbon relieving group, all right? It doesn't matter where these sit. I could have had the ammonia here and the carbon relieving group on the line, okay? Still two reactants, all right? What do we have here, carbon relieving group? Do we have a nucleophile? SP3 nitrogen could be a nucleophile. Simplest sp3 nitrogen, ammonia. Okay. And these electrons can come in here and kick off the leaving group. Neutral nitrogen, good nucleophile, does not have to be an anion. Bam, kick it off. What do we get? Well, up here now bonded to the carbon, kick off the leaving group. It becomes Br minus, right? Note that now the nucleophile becomes positive because it now has a fourth bond. We have to lose an H to go neutral here. I'm showing this condensed. Can Br minus take an H? If it did, this would go neutral because it would get its lone pair back, right? And we'd form HBr. Is that going to happen? Will Br minus take this H? Well, that's just an acid-base reaction. How do we judge that? This pKa is about 10. The acid over here is HBr, a strong acid. Its pKa is like negative 5. Which side's favored? 10 or negative 5? 10, the weaker acid. This side is favored by how much? 10 to the 15. That's 100 gazillion. Okay? At equilibrium, you've got 100 gazillion of these and only one of those. So is Br minus going to take this H and send it this way? No. One out of every 100 gazillion, that's nothing. Br, okay? You're not going to generate a strong acid. So it sits right here. It stays here. It stays in the, this is our organic uh, product here. It stays positive, protonated. The only way to get rid of this H is to include another base either in the reaction or at the end of the reaction. Okay, my reaction is over, I'm going to add in some base. And if you add in some base, then it'll take the proton and we can get a neutral product. Okay, but Br minus is not going to take the proton. Because we know how to judge an acid base equilibrium by pKa values. The problem with this direct alkylation sometimes of a nitrogen is polyalkylation. Okay? You can end up with two alkyl groups on your nitrogen, dialkylated. Well, how does that happen? A little bit complex, but it's because this thing can react again, but not in this state. There is no long pair. But ammonia. While this reaction is happening, instead of ammonia reacting here, it can come over here and take an H from this product. Because ammonia can act as a base. 
Ammonia takes the H. Ammonia now has the H and it frees up this. There's a neutral product, which is the same I showed here. It requires a base. But this is in the reaction. Once this becomes neutral again, it can react again. It'll become protonated, but then maybe ammonia can take its proton. And then actually this could react again. And you could get trialkylation. Keep going. Polyalkylation. They can just keep reacting. But again, you have to understand, this is not going to keep reacting. It has to become neutral and get the lone pair, but ammonia can act as a base in the reaction. That sometimes happens when you don't want it to. Polyalkylation. Now, an example of this is shown in the very back of this handout. There's actually three SN2 reactions shown on this page. A synthesis of Zyrtec and antihistamine. we will look at is right here starting with uh, compound 42 carbon with a leaving group reacting with this substrate here ah good question which nitrogen is nucleophilic one on the left or the right which long pair is more reactive towards coming in here and kicking off this leaving group Left. One on the left, correct? Right? Left. One on the left. Why is the one on the right much less reactive? Doesn't it? Because it's resonance delocalized. The lone pair is involved in resonance, yes. Much more basic, much more nucleophilic. This guy's busy doing something. These electrons come in here and boom. Can we kick off, can we do SN2 on such a carbon with a leaving group? That's a secondary. Can we do SN2 on secondary? Yes, it's the slowest. What if it was tertiary? No, you don't do SN2 on tertiary. This ain't tertiary, it's secondary. Kick it off. Now, they don't show the, the actual product here because they do it two steps. One week, the next week, two steps. The second step, they cleave this group over here. And that's how in the product, it, that group is no longer there. Don't worry about that. But the first step is the nitrogen kicked off the, here, here's the product. Well, where'd the H go? This H. Well, it had to be lost because if there was still an H there, that'd be a positive nitrogen. Okay? First step, forget about this. First step, why did they include a base in the first reaction? Sodium carbonate. That proton, it's the base is included in the reaction. Okay. Uh, other, otherwise, it, the product would be protonated at the end. It would be the HBr salt. Okay. So there we go. By the way, I said it's SN2 because we had a good nucleophile. Now, how do we know it's SN2? I said most likely. Perhaps this is an SN1 reaction. Is that right? Is SN2 or could, could this be SN1? How could we tell if it was SN1 or SN2? Why would it matter? How could we tell if this was SN1 or SN2? How could we prove it? Stereochemistry? 
Uh, we could. Because actually this carbon is chiral. Because these phenols are about the same. This one has a chlorine. I'm just not showing any stereochemistry chemistry here, or they're not. But if this, was, if this was S, then we could say, huh, the product is R, and so that would mean the reaction went by SN2. But if this was S and the product was racemic, that would suggest that it was SN1. You're only going to become racemic if you go to a carbocation. Yes? What's another way to? What's another way to determine if this is SN1 or SN2? What about rate, reaction rate study? What type of reaction rate experiment could we do? Which reactant? Double the amount of this and continue on. What would we be looking for? compared to if you did not double. So if it was SN2, what would you expect if you doubled this? If it was SN2? If it was SN2, okay. Here are your two reactants. Which ones of these are involved in the rate determining step of an SN2? Both. What well, if it was SN1? Which, which ones are involved in the rate determining step if it's SN1? Only that. If it was SN1, well, if we change the concentration of this and nothing happens to the rate, that means it's not involved in the rate determining step. That means it's SN1. But if we change the concentration of this and the, and the rate does change, that means this is involved in the rate determining step. That would mean it was SN2. Why would, it, why would it matter to know this? You got the product, who cares what the mechanism is, right? Well, what if you worked for this company who made Zyrtec and you, you wanted to improve this yield? Maybe the yield is 50%. Maybe, the, maybe we had to get it to 51% so we could make another million dollars. To pay the bills and not lose our job. How would you suggest improving the yield? Well, if the mechanism is SN1 and you raise your hand and say, hey, I say, I say we use more of this, well, that ain't going to be a good suggestion because if it's SN1, you can add more and more of this all you want. It ain't going to change the rate or anything. You'll be wasting your money. But if it's SN2, then, then maybe this would do something. If you want to manipulate your reaction conditions, understanding the mechanism is, would be important. Otherwise, you're just shooting in the dark. Grasping at straws. Uh, there's some other SN2 reactions there, typically things that I highlight. Um, okay. Direct alkylation of nitrogen is possible. We just saw an example there in the synthesis of Zyrtec. But it's problematic because of polyalkylation. Sometimes you can get two, two groups. Uh, thus, there are lots of ways to, to put alkyl groups on nitrogen indirectly. Indirectly. You'll actually see uh, one or two indirect ways in organic two. Um, one indirect way I'll show you here is using azide. In the previous example, we used ammonia okay, as a nucleophile. Ammonia, good nucleophile. But we could get polyoculation through what I showed you there. Another way to get the same product is through using azide. Azide, N3. What's the charge of N3? Who 
let's charge it in three. Anybody? I hear, I just can't hear. Somebody said something. Negative one. Negative one. How do you know it's negative one? Um, formal charge. Yeah, how do you know it's negative one? It should have five, but it only has four phones, four electrons. Uh, I'd have to look at that. Sodium is plus one, always. That means N3 is negative one. Yes, it's negative one. Uh, and azide was on the Lewis structure sheet from way back. In August, uh, Azi N3 is typical Lewis structure is like this. Two lone pairs on each end. Thus, each end is minus. And the central nitrogen no lone pair is positive. It's your most common Lewis structure. Of course, there's other resonance structures you could draw. But the net charge is minus. Azide is called. Either end is your nucleophile. These electrons here kick off the leaving group. And your alkyl azide, okay, it's an azide with an alkyl group on it now. Uh, your alkyl azide. Thus, it's just like this, right? It's the same thing. Boom, boom, boom. Still minus on the end, positive here. But this nitrogen is now bonded to the ethyl group. And there's one lone pair left. But this is this. Ethyl N3. Ethyl N3. Your N3 is net neutral. But it's got two charges. In the most common resonance structure. So this is this, it's a neutral molecule, net neutral, alkyl azide. But this thing, the N3 can be reduced by hydrogenation, precious metal catalyst, and you can cleave off, basically you can cleave off this end and leave this as an NH2, so ethyl NH2. And here's your primary mean, which we made on the previous page. This way though is an indirect method going through the azide, then reducing. The indirect method is not going to give you any polyalkylation like the direct method possibly can. Not quite sure the fate of the other two nitrogens. It may be nitrogen gas. I've never really known or taken the time to, to look. But in the end, we can get Instead of using ammonia, we used azide to get the same product shown on the previous page. So this also just gives us a chance to see azide and how it can act as a nucleophile. Okay? By an SN2 reaction. Again, in organic 2, you'll see other indirect methods. Uh, one called a reductive amination you start with a carbonyl compound. It's a very classical reaction in organic too. Um, okay. C. Another reaction of nitrogen, neutral nitrogen. You can actually make what's called a quaternary amine. Now we've already made these. Well, actually not, but halfway. A quat. Okay, sometimes it's called a quat. That's short for quaternary amine. Typically when you hear quat, you're talking about amines. I mean, you can have quaternary carbons, but whenever you hear the term quat, it's usually talking about quaternary amines. Uh, here's a reaction. You take this tertiary amine, okay, react it with a carbon of the leaving group, bam, kick off the leaving group, SN2. 
And now we get a fourth alkyl group on there. Br minus. Now this nitrogen positive, but it does not have a proton. So it's not going to go neutral nearly as easy like this. Four different carbons. No proton on the nitrogen here. And these can actually be isolated. But you can isolate it with the proton as well. But these can as well, and they're called quads. No proton on the nitrogen. All four carbons. Now this is a tertiary nitrogen. It's not good at SN2, but we never said that the nucleophile can't do SN2, the substitute. We only said that a tertiary halide, or with the Lehman groups on tertiary, could not do SN2. This can. It's going to be slow. It's going to require some good amount of heat because it's sterically crowded. Now, the methyl groups are not that big. Of course, if these methyl don't don't dirty up your writing here, but if these melt, if these groups became larger here, like maybe isopropyl groups, that's going to make that tougher nucleophile. All this increased amount of sterics. But those methyl groups are sort of small, okay? This can be done. Now quads, where uh, quads are important to know. You'll see quads. Anybody ever heard of uh, acetylcholine? or sometimes called acetylcholine. It's a neurotransmitter. It comes from choline. Put an acetyl group on the oxygen, you have acetylcholine. But here's choline. It's an alcohol, but the nitrogen is a quad. It's got four carbons. Where do you, have you seen acetylcholine in biology class or something? See the structure? Or you don't look at structure? I don't know why, because the, all the activity is comes from the structure. You want to know how it reacts and what it does, you have to know the structure. Um, but it's a, it's a quant on that end. Uh, anybody ever heard of didesyl, dimethyl, ammonium, di chloride? Chloride? Yeah, that's it. Anybody heard of that one? What's on the nitrogen here? Two decil groups, two <coughs> carbons, didesyl, two methyls, dimethyl, a positive nitrogen is called an ammonium, and then the chloride. Where do you know that one from? <coughs> if I ever go to the Y and work out? You guys don't work out. Uh, you know they have little things where you, you, you do your hands like this? What's that for? Germs. <laughs> what, what's in that stuff? Anybody got something in your pocketbook? What's that, what's that stuff? What you have in there is probably ethanol. It's probably like ethanol. You can read it. But these, these quats like this with the long alkyl groups are used as antimicrobials. Okay? Because they disrupt the cell membrane or something, biology. Um, okay. Kill the, the microbe. But I, over at the, the reason I put this one here is because I was over at the Y one time. And I was like reading it, and it said, it said that right there. That's what over at the Y, they have it in the, the stuff. Okay, that one right there. Uh, so there's another application of a quat. Okay, antimicrobial. Uh, next time you're at the checkout line, look at these little labels on things sitting around. Uh, also, World Records in Chemistry, it's a great book. Check it out. I mean, literally, check it out. Okay? Uh, the world's most bitter compound. All right, here it is. World's most bitter. Okay, there's people who sit and test these things all day. Here's the world's most bitter. It's a salt, an ion pair. But it ain't you. It ain't your simple salt. If you want a simple salt, we can show you one like this. Here's a positive and here's a negative. That's called sodium chloride. Or we can show you one like this. Here's a positive, here's a negative. It's also a salt. But the positive here is a quant. Right? And then the anion is a benzoate. World's most bitter compound. What's it good for? Well, you can put it in like antifreeze and keep your cats from drinking it. Stuff like that. All right? 
But they go to drink it instead of it being sweet like antifreeze is, it's bitter. I don't want any of that. Um, so, many applications of organic chemistry. All right. Uh, believe it or not, we've looked at sulfur, oxygen, nitrogen. What about carbon as a nucleophile? And I guarantee you, uh, one through four must be under nucleophiles. Okay, fourth type of nucleophile, carbon. Well, a neutral carbon typically is not going to have a lone pair. That's the carbene, which is an odd thing, but we have seen carbene. So it's not going to be a nucleophile as a neutral carbon. But if we can put, convert it to a carbanion, then it can be a nucleophile. One of the most easiest to convert to carbanions is your terminal acetylene. Terminal alkyne. Okay? This terminal H here on the alkyne has enough acidity. PKA, anybody remember PKA approximately of a terminal alkyne? You can check your PKA list in the back of the workbook. Approximately what? Right, about 25. Okay? That is acidic enough to do chemistry with. Barely. Get up into 30 and 40, it's, it's just not, no acidity. We can make the carbanion here called an acetylite anion. And if you remember, this is the last thing we looked at before test two. Remember the miner's helmet? This was it. Look back at that page. What base did we use here? Not hydroxide. The PK would have to be less than 16 to use hydroxide. What base did we use here? We used, I showed you two different bases. That was the alkyne handout. One of them was indutyl lithium, the other was NH2. Please look at back at that handout. That's going to be problems here. Because we would make this sodium here plus what? Plus ammonia. Okay? Now that we have a carbanion, these electrons can come in here. Do we have a leaving group here? We're doing leaving group chemistry right now for the past two weeks. Carbon's been leaving group, substitution reaction. Do we have a leaving group? Tosylate, right? Yeah. Oh, toss. What's a D? Deuterium. Deuterium. Isotope of hydrogen has one neutron. You know the isotopes of hydrogens are the only isotopes that have their own names? Isotopes of carbons don't have their own name. We just call it carbon-13 or carbon-14. Isotopes of nitrogen, we just call them nitrogen-14 and nitrogen-15. Isotopes of hydrogen, though, we have, they have names. And H2 is called deuterium. What is H3 called? Tritium. Tritium is radioactive. They used to make it at the plant. Deuterium is not radioactive. Deuterium, not a leaving group though, just a, it's just a fancy hydrogen. Instructors like to use it because it allows us to have stereochemistry here. See, if, if that was an H, then there would be two H's there, and they would not be chiral. But I can make it a D, now it's chiral, but because it's a D, it doesn't make it more substituted. It's still a primary carbon here. And here we go, boom, kick off the leaving group. Let me show product. Uh, the phenyl, we can abbreviate just pH here. pH like that, not pH like this. The difference, this is pH and that's phenyl, right? Phenyl, uh, alkyne, yeah. Now this is bonded to this carbon. 
and this carbon we can, how are we going to get this grown here? How about something like, um, <coughs> that's a D, yeah? How about that? Look good? SN2 with inversion? Two comes with inversion, right? It's like your Big Mac comes with fries. Everybody good with that? Everybody good with my product? Is going to question whether it's inverted or not? If it was inverted, then it would be able to do that. I don't know what it Anybody else? Why does it need to be dashed? Let's see if it's inverted. Is this R or S here? Oxygen's one, carbon's two. D or H, which is high priority? Because the other thing here is an H. D, correct, because it has a higher atomic number. So this is 3. Where's the H? The H is here, but it's going back. 2 in the plane, 1 forward. What's going back? The H. So here we go. What is this, R and S? It's S. What do we got here? Ah, uh, what's high priority now? Carbon or carbon? Well, this carbon has one carbon bind to it. This carbon has three. One, two, three. H in the back. What is this? R. It's inverted. I could have drawn the product with a dash if we wanted to dash. I mean, you can draw the product however you want. For example, I could draw the product like this. Um, D here. Uh, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Like this. You like it better like this? This is also R. These are the same thing. <laughs> Don't fall in the trap of thinking just because that's bolded that this has to be dashed. It has to be inverted. But I can draw the product any way you want. Just like if the product's the right hand, I can say, look, the right hand, the thumb's on the left. Look, the right hand, the thumb's on the right. Which is it? Either way you want, it's the right hand. It's the same thing. Okay. So what do we do? We made a carbon. This is a lot like in Williams and Ether synthesis, where the neutral OH, we first have to remove the proton to make the O minus. Then you alkylate the oxygen. Well, you have to remove the proton to make the carbanion. Then you can do the SN2. Because this ain't a good nucleophile for SN2. It ain't no nucleophile at all. I mean, this could. Pi bond can act as a nucleophile. By the way, pi bonds don't do substitution reactions. Not in this class. Okay. Uh, pi bonds attack other electrophiles like carbocations. And, um, substitution reaction is always going to be a lone pair coming in and kicking it off. Okay. Lone pair, not a pi bond, uh, at least not at the introductory level. Okay, so that was a carbanion. Can we have other carbanions? Yeah, I don't know where we saw this before, but uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band. KCN. What's the charge of the CN?
potassium is plus, that means the CN is minus. Right? Okay, CN. Here's your low structure. Cyanide. Very toxic. But the carbon is a carbonion. Now, something like this, you typically you can just buy. Where up here, you're probably going to have to make the anion yourself. Because it's a little bit more complex. But something simple like this, probably just buy KCN. Okay, probably made this. Then your carbanion come in here, kick it off, kick off the leaving group, and there you go. Uh, product, you can draw the benzene ring out if you want. Uh, boom, boom. How about something like this? And we can just draw the CN condensed. That's okay. Diversion, right? And there I did go from dash to bold. Just the way it's drawn, it's a little bit easier. Probably because here, the leaving group was um, four quarter back. But in the example up there, the leaving group was in the plane. So when I was looking at it, I kind of brought the new group in the plane, and that's how I drew it. And it ended up being bold to bold. But the leaving group here is back, so I brought the new one in from the front. That's just easier. What's DMSO? Just a common solvent. Okay? It's probably on the solvent list from week one. Water soluble, very polar. It's an example of a polar aprotic. What does aprotic mean? Not protic. Not protic. What does not protic mean? Something like ethanol is a common solvent, but it's got this proton. What is DMSO? Dimethyl sulfoxide. Dimethyl sulfoxide. Well, it also has protons. Hydrogen, we call proton. The difference is these protons are on carbon. They're, they're not going to do any hydrogen bonding, and they're not acidic. Any, but this can do hydrogen bonding. It also has a certain degree of acidity. And so it's really sort of like neon sign. Hey, you've got this proton here that's really more reactive. It's called a protic solvent. It's called a non-protic solvent, or a protic. We'll take a minute just to, polar A products are, are uh, great for SN2. Great for SN2. Why do you think they're good for SN2? Better than, better than product solvents. This thing has to go react here. These electrons have to go react here. Don't, don't redraw all this. But what's going to be going on right here? What's that? Exactly, hydrogen bond. If your nucleophile is hydrogen bonding, there's lots of solvent here. I mean, it's solvent all over the place. We can even maybe show, you know, hydrogen bonding to one or both. Or what's this going to do to your nucleophilic strength? Make it stronger, or is it going to tie it up, make it weaker? It makes it weaker. It's 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 not going to hydrogen bond to this. Okay. 
Hydrogen bonding makes your nucleophile weaker. You, that's not good for it. You want, you want this, you don't want any of this. Hey, long pairs, we, we want you, you're on a mission. Your mission is to do this, okay? Forget about those, those solvent molecules, okay? You're distracting. All right, polar A product, good for SN2. Uh, have a good day, guys. There's a, there's a last worksheet in this handout. Please be working those problems.